Hi guys, it's Nancy, and I wanted to show you guys some of the new Simon Hurley release products. So if you missed my video, I made this one with the brand new Puddle Pals stamp set. I took the solid umbrella and made a slimline card, stamping it out in Simon's inks. And then the sentiment is, after every storm comes a rainbow, and then it has the little clouds. So I thought that was super cute. Here is the stamp set. It has some really great sentiments to kind of pick up someone, very positive as well as some really cute um, illustrations there. Look at how cute the little dog is with the raincoat. So definitely check out the Simon Hurley page for some more ideas with the stamp set. I did um, also use the new background, which is called Splish Splash, and the brand new color. It is called Breakup Blue, and made this cute little card with the background stamp and there's the cute little girl and her dog and the umbrella. It very much reminds me of my daughter and her dog. And here is the rubber cling background, which is Splish Splash. And one of the other things that I received as part of this release is a new stencil. And the stencil is called Geometry. And I thought, wouldn't this be a great time to demonstrate some of the things that you can do with Simon's stencil? So we will get back to this stencil in just a moment. Um, so uh, the obvious one I'm going to say is ink blending. So this is another one of Simon's stencils. This is a great floral for this time of year. This is called Flower Power. And you just very simply, I already inked the other side, but I'm going to grab this new Breakup Blue and a domed um, applicator, which you can now get from either ranger or scrapbook.com. Make sure you check out Simon's video on that as well. And you just simply blend through the stencil. Of course, you can go lighter or darker by your pressure. The darker or the harder you press down, the more pressure you're gonna get. The lighter, the lighter it's going to be. You can also mix and match your colors. So uh, the most common way that people do use their stencils, I think, is through ink blending through them. So that's one of the things that you can do. Another fun thing you can do is if you have gotten your hands on some of the Simon Hurley reinkers, which I have all of them, you can make your own spritz spray. So you take a little mini mister. These are also from Ranger. And you take a couple of drops of the ink and spray that in there with some water. You don't need anything extra. We're just going to grab a piece of heavy duty cardstock here. And this is another stencil called Honey Hive. Actually, no, let's go with these fun little ghosts. I know it's not ghost season, but they're too cute. They're called Ghosted. Now I am going to spray the back of this with a little bit of pixie spray off camera here. You wanna give that just a moment to get tacky. And you can pick that up at scrapbook.com. Most of these products can be picked up at either scrapbook.com or Ranger. I will have a link down below for you guys. Once that Pixie spray is nice and tacky. It will stick to your cardstock and not allow anything to seep underneath. And I'm going to grab my spray box. And you're just going to spritz some of that color through. And again, the more you add, the darker the color is going to be. The lighter you spritz it, the further back you spritz it, the lighter the color is going to be. Where if you're closer, it's more concentrated, it's going to be darker. I'm going to take my heat gun to this real quick. You don't want to apply it too closely. You don't want to melt your stencil. I'm going to take a little bit of extra paper towel here to just sop up some of that extra ink. And now we have our spritz sprayed 
ghosts through the stencil, making that with our own shimmer sprays with just reinkers. So I'm sure you probably have some of those. And then you just wipe your stencil clean and that's all done, okay? Another fun way to use Simon's stencils is with the new Simon Hurley um, blocks. And they should be back in stock. If not, check back again with Ranger and Scrapbook.com. But these blocks are really fun. Um, what you do is you take your heat tool to it and then it will soften and then you can press that into your stencil and it will pick up the design of the stencil and you will basically have a stamp at that point. So let me show you how easy that is. Once you have that nice and heated, you're going to press that down evenly as much as you can to your stencil. And I have the glass mat underneath. And then you'll have that imprint now on your block, okay? So then you're gonna take your block. Let me bring my paper back in here. And then you're gonna take your ink pad rub that across and if you wanted to spritz it with a little bit of water you could do that just lightly mist it and now instead of going directly through the stencil you will have a stamp of the stencil Ta-da! and it's cool because you get this watercolory effect and we can continue to go through ink this, spritz it, and it will take as many impressions as you need it to until you are done with that design. Now what's cool is when you are done with this design and you want to make an imprint of something else, this cool background, we can reheat this and it will take that design off. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of water and just clean my stamping foam. And then I'm going to reheat it and you'll see that it will flatten itself out. Just like that, the stamping foam is now flat. We have a blank canvas that we can start over again with another stencil. So it's really neat. You can also take Simon's stamps and stamp into these and make a reverse image if you wanted to do that um, with the stamps. But we wanna talk about stencils today. Another thing you can do I don't have in front of me is do mixed media with your gel plate. So if you have a gel press, gel plate you can obviously paint and ink through those and use the stencils through that but I want to show you guys what my favorite thing is to do with the stencils which involves foiling and if you missed it Simon and I did a video last year and we played around with foils so let me show you what we did one of the things that we did with any stencil that you have and that's really cool about this stencil is the fun design of it is you can run through that with some texture paste transparent gloss medium from Ranger, okay? You want to use the gloss. There's a gloss and a matte. There's a white one. You want transparent paste texture gloss, okay? The gloss is important because that's going to give you a pretty shiny, smooth finish. 
And when you put it through your stencil, it's going to be uh, milky white in color. Very much reminds me of glue. However, when it dries, it will dry clear. And I will say this stuff lasts a really long time, a really, really long time, okay? Um, now, you do need some kind of a heat source for this to work. So once it is completely dry, you want to give it about 24 hours to dry. Um, you can see it's very glossy. It's shiny. Hey, that looks great. But we want to step it up a notch, so we're going to foil this. Now, you can use any foils that you have. I have some deco foil here. This is the um, holographic blue, which is called glass slipper. But I thought this would be prettier in the rainbow shattered glass. And I'll link those down below. But if you have any toner foil, it will work. And I am going to be using my mink machine. And this is a mini mink machine. This is uh, specifically made for foiling, and I'm going to have it on heat setting three. Now, mine looks different because I have some vinyl decal on here. But you can use a mink machine. You can use a large mink machine. Or if you have a laminator, if your laminator gets nice and hot, I would let it heat up for at least 30 minutes. Um, this will work fine. And what's cool is when you go through the stencil is it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be very organic looks to the stencil. You can see kind of the marks from my spatula. You're going to use any kind of plastic spatula. I know Ranger sells a couple different ones that you can get as well to use. And then you're going to scrape off the excess once you get it through the stencil. And I do not recommend pixie spray for this method. So basically what you would do is line up your stencil, take the texture paste gloss, scoop that on like icing a cake, put the extra back into the jar, and then you immediately want to go clean your stencils. You do not want that paste drying on the stencils. You're then going to take your background piece that will be milky white, and you're going to let it dry, like I said, for at least 24 hours is my recommendation. Once it's dry, you're going to get this clear coating. And you do want to be careful with the deco foil because they do tend to, uh, they come with like five or six sheets. I think it's five sheets. But they're very thin, so they do stick together like um, staticky. Uh, so just be careful when you're pulling them out to make sure you're only pulling out one at a time. Do store them back in their little containers here. I'm just trying to make sure I only have one piece here. Eventually, you'll figure out that it feels a little thicker and you have more than one piece. It does feel like I have more than one piece here, but maybe not. Okay, and then all you have to do here, one of my tricks is to dusty, dusty. So you want to dust, dust, dust your image, dust, dust, dust the back of your foil. You do want to cut that down to kind of match in size as best as you can. If you're going to be using a laminator, you're just going to use a piece of folded uh, copy paper as your carrier sheet to run it through your laminator. And what the laminator is going to do, or the mink, is the heat from the machine is basically going to remelt that texture paste and it's going to allow the foil to stick. Now in the mink machine, we use actual special carrier sheets that come from the manufacturer, you can purchase these as well from scrapbook.com. They are called mink transfer folders. They are not the same as laminating folders. And you just wanna smooth that out and make sure you don't have any extra lumps or bumps in there. And then you're going to feed that through the machine. And you wanna hold that up, make sure that it doesn't um, flop down. Once it goes through the machine, it will come out the other side. This is a slow process, so you do want to be very patient. Wait for that to come through. And then once that goes through the machine, you do not want to reveal that yet. You want to let that cool down. As tempting as it is 
to rip that off of there. Don't do it. I think that's enough time to let that cool and then all you're going to do is pull that foil off and it's going to stick to every place you had texture paste and yes it is supposed to be very distressed and organic looking again because it's going to be wherever the paste went through the stencil we cannot get a perfect uh, image through a stencil, but that's what it's designed to look like. So you're going to have hills and valleys so you can see where the paste was higher. It's a little more solid. Where the paste was lower, there are little valleys. That's where you see the black coming through, and that's what it's supposed to look like. It's not going to be perfectly foiled like when we're doing it on printed toner sheets. All right, so there we go. Hopefully this gives you guys some ideas on how to use some products from Simon Hurley. Again, you can pick these up from scrapbook.com or Ranger and specifically using the stencils. Again, you can use them with foiling with texture paste transparent gloss product. You can use them with stamping and the new stamping foam. You can use them with um, sprays which you can make yourself with ink blenders. I don't know where my sample went. Oh, I think I left it in the box. Or you can use it with traditional ink blending. And don't forget while you're out there shopping to check out the new products from Simon Hurley. We have that brand new blue, which you can see here. It is called Breakup Blue. Don't forget when you pick up the ink pad to also pick up the re-inker. We have the new uh, background stamp, which is called Splish Splash. And we have the new stamp set itself, which is called Puddle Pals. Super large stamp set. You get 23 pieces, high quality photopolymer made here in the United States. Ships, ships very quickly from um, New Jersey if you order it from Ranger. Or like I said, if they're sold out, you can check out scrapbook.com. And the fun stencil called Geometry, which I used for the foiling as well. So go check out these new products. If you have any questions about anything I've used, put them down in the comments. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye guys.